Welcome to the special edition of the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. I'm Alan Hall, and I'm in San Diego, warm San Diego, with at ACP OMS, and I'm here with Andres Rupke, who is the founding partner and CEO of Wind Power Lab based in Copenhagen, Denmark. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> so we're going to have a really technical discussion, but a really timely discussion yeah. about rain erosion and rain erosion testing. I was just over in Denmark, went to DTU, saw the Leading Edge Erosion Conference. Fascinated, great speakers, a lot of great data. One of the main d discussion points was when you run a rain erosion test on a particular coating for a wind turbine, there's a lot of variability. Mm. And the holy grail is to get what they call a VN curve for a coating. That's the velocity versus the number of impacts. You should be able to draw roughly a straight line. Exactly. Okay. So when I was over at Copenhagen <laughs> and watching all this go on, there's a lot of slides up about VN curves where the VN curve was up and down. The tilt of it was all over the place when they had done testing at different rain erosion facilities or had tested the same erosion facility on the same kind of sample, getting what they thought was a different result. Now, that seems to be driven by, in part, the human element. Exactly. Everything about that test is pretty well controlled, mm -hmm. and the people at R&D Test Systems which design those rain erosion rigs have made a really nice machine. Let's yes. just be honest, it's yeah. a really good machine. But, as Wind Power Lab is, is de determining, the issue is looking at the photos of the damage and then saying, oh, here's where damage starts, and this is how it propagates. That's a human element problem that's added to this very technical decision-making. We're making errors there, and that's where Wind Power Lab comes in. Exactly. And Wind Power Lab, you guys are blade experts, right? We have blade experts, yeah. so we are actually coming from the field observation side, if you like. Yeah, so yeah. we see the products when they fail. <laughs> so, sorry to bring the bad news, but we see uh, leading edge erosion out there still, even yes. though we have big uh, LEP campaigns. Yeah. And uh, yeah. one thing is the application. It's a hard environment. So it is. Turn out it is. Offshore, for instance. Terrible. But we also see coatings fail earlier yeah. than anticipated. Yeah. And the long-term effect is a lot of unnecessary cost for these wind farm owners. Yes. Because then they're looking into yet one more LEP campaign. Right. Through the end of, before the end of life of this uh, wind farm. Yeah. That's extremely expensive. Onshore, but it's <laughs> maybe 20 times more expensive offshore. It is. So if we should fix this... Then we should. We should. Then uh, why don't we try to test our products uh, a little bit better? Right. And that's where the Leading Edge Erosion Symposium you visited. It's, it's really, really good. We get some focus on this. Oh, um, yeah. Because you look at the, it, all the erosion testing that is going on with our partners, R&D. Yes. You have the most sophisticated machine. You can control the droplet size, the speed, and whatnot. It's magnificent. And then it is. the tons of data coming out of the system yeah. will have to be processed um, by some highly skilled uh, experts, right. test engineers. And here the trouble starts, right? Because yes. if we are the test engineers, you are getting your 200 pictures in from the test. Right. It's fairly expensive to run the test. It is. I look at the same data. I will almost, I'm almost certain that I can promise you that you will not <laughs> get the, the same results. Right. So that means if you produce one VN curve, I'll produce another one. Somebody, third party should select which one is the, the right one. And that is what <laughs> we base uh, our product on. It is. I, it's, and there's mil literally millions of dollars going exactly. in per year yeah. on rain erosion coatings. Yeah based upon the data and the published data yes. on the VN curves. Yeah. So when you invest in a leading edge shell, protection shell like this, this is something we bought from our friends at Polytech, then uh, it's a matter of the durability. Yeah. So when, when will this start uh, eroding? Right. That's what you basically test in an yeah. erosion test. On. Yeah. The VN curve tells you something about when that time is. Right? Yes. And um, if we are incorrect, because we have some accuracy issues in our assessment between the two of us, 
then the durability of this product um, not might be, be better. Oh, it could be right? better, it could be yeah, worse. It could you be don't worse. know. We don't know. Yeah. And that's the whole point. Yeah. So with the software here, then we are um, assisting our leading edge protection developers or manufacturers in uh, handling all the, the many thousand hours of tests coming yeah. through <laughs> and uh, tons of data. It's organized. You can share your, uh, your test between uh, inside your test department. Right. And then you can go first and do your test down to my test. We can do an overlay. And from that, you can actually see that we agree. Right. Because we have a more um, accurate view on when we start to see the erosion for the first time. Right. So in here, you mark up with small polygons around the various items you see from the test results. Yes. And you should have the same picture as, or the same results as I should. So when Power Lab has developed this piece of software, yeah. it's based in the cloud. It's called Rocky, like Rocky Balboa. And what it does is it takes all those photographs from the rain erosion test. So what, as, the, as the rain erosion test proceeds, it runs for a little while, then it stops, and they take a high resolution photo. Mm. They start it back up again, they continue the count, yeah. right? So there you have a series of photos showing increasing levels of damage over time. But the issue is, how do you track that VN curve from those images? That's where the human element has to come in. And a lot of times, if they're not using a Rocky type system, they're actually using like Excel or PowerPoint yeah. to sort through all these photos and go, oh, it was at minute 52 that th yeah. this issue started. But that is highly interpretive. It's and, and, and today, if we, we see that happening, right? That oh, we yeah. see clients with spreadsheets and PowerPoints. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. And they're really doing their best. The problem is, you sure. cannot, I cannot reproduce your test result, right? Right. So, Which is the ultimate point of a test. It exactly. should be reproducible. Yeah. Otherwise, something yeah. is wrong yeah. with the test setup. Yeah. So we have tried to standardize um, the way you should annotate in here. Yes. Not annotate, but mark up with polygons. Track. When, track and, and, and when something happens. You can play back and forth inside your time series to get even more accurate uh, assessment yeah. results. Yeah. And by doing that, uh, we will actually be able to, to, the two of us will be able to come up with the same test result. Right. So the, the results out of the Rocky system have been, from what I've seen, remarkable. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't think the human element had played that much into the, to the results. But it is you get wide differences in basically the same test data. So if we had the same data set in front of two engineers yeah. going through it, they would pick different VN exactly. curves out of that same set of data. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem for the industry. It is, and, um, and, and it's very costly as well. It's super costly, because, yeah. Or it could be even better durability, right? Be so it could well, go both ways. Sure, because you yeah. ever, what, the, what happens with those VN curves is that if I'm an operator, I have a rough idea of the number of water impacts of, at my site because I track that. It's yeah. one of the things I track. So then I know, like, okay, I'm going to have X many raindrops hit this material over time. Therefore, I have a lifetime of X. Hmm. If that VN curve is wrong, I could be overpaying for a material yeah i could be have a material that just fails too early again overpaying for this thing yeah. so it's a cost issue for the operator at the end of the day and then the operators are struggling because from what i could tell and i'm not an operator but if i were an operator i'd be really confused right now yeah. on rain erosion products mm -hmm. because we're at acp oms and I, i run into four or five different providers of coatings mm -hmm. here and they all saying the same thing to me. Yeah. But when I talk to the operators, they say, no. Mm -hmm. Like this, this one works in our site and that one didn't. Yeah. And, and it's a consistency on the engineering side. It, it is, but it's, it's not only on you know, the, the test side, but it's definitely also on the application side out. Sure, or, or oh sure, show. sure. So, so I'm not saying that we have uh, poor products on the market. I'm just saying that we need to step it up on the testing side. So we. Sure get the correct VN curves. We need to test the variability. Well, exactly. But the problem is if we interpret the photos incorrectly, we don't have any data. We can't make any heads or tails of that. We, don't have, we can't start drawing the line. Exactly. That is a huge problem. Yeah. And I think that's where, based upon the, um, <laughs> the number of doctorate students and really educated people that are working the rain erosion issue, Anders, you're right, the application is really key, but also just being able to interpret the data, it's, it's just a huge hurdle. Yeah. 
And there really isn't any tools today. Yeah. And then being able to share those results and reproduce yes. those results. Yes. So we have a proper workflow that I'll call it quality check your, your work, your yeah. analysis, yeah. and I can reproduce it. Then yeah. we are aligned and right. following a standardized way That's of- That's the dream. It is, this is a, ladies and gentlemen, this is Lean and Six Sigma. It, yes. It's, it's not something new. Any other industry would test their products like this. <laughs> so you should be able to take the same coding to two different, essentially R&D test systems, Rain Rose facilities, they're all in Europe, mm -hmm. and get the same results out of both sites. Yes. That is the goal. You yeah. can't do that today. No. At, at least then it's based on luck. Uh, that yeah. You hit the yeah. same number inside your spreadsheets, for instance, or right. whatever system right. you've developed. Um, and then, uh, then of course, uh, we can do this for uh, all kinds of uh, rain erosion test facilities. Yes. And we can do this not just only for what is applied in the wind industry. Um, I pray for that we, we get some more proper testing inside the aerospace. Aerospace <laughs> needs it horribly bad, uh, yes, they do. Uh, I, that's sad news in my years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a difficult problem. They have, yeah. The aerospace has the same problem that wind turbine engineers have, is what do you do with all this data? Yeah. How do I interpret it? Every engineer interprets it different. If you... It's hard to be independent, especially if it's your coding. Yes. You're the designer of the coding yeah. and you're going through the photos. Yeah. You want to lean towards, yeah, this is working better. Yeah. It's hard, you got to take that human element out of it to, to really get down to the raw data. And that, that, that has been the hurdle. Rocky though gets rid of that, right? Yes. So R Rocky takes that data, even old data. So the data you have been sitting on for two or three years mm -hmm. in the past, mm -hmm. you can actually put it through the Rocky system and say, okay, the real VN curve is this. Yes. So not even on, you don't have to repeat the test. No, no, where you can you, reuse your data if you like and, and you know, optimize your quality in hindsight. Yes. And then know where you are. Maybe you are in a really, really strong position. You can position. have the great material, yeah, yeah. just not know it. Let's hope for, for yes. it. Uh, but going forward, then your entire test engineering team will have the same uh, yeah. tool available. And right. If somebody leaves the company, it's still in here. It's still there, right? yeah. yeah. So, and uh, as we know from the Rocky movies, it uh, does Rocky <laughs> 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So this is Rocky 1, and now we're generating a lot of data. And of course, yeah. we are also working for, on the AI side of things, yeah. uh, because all this annotation will eventually be automated so our test engineers can focus their time on, you know, optimizing and making it even more accurate in here so we get even more accurate VN curves, right? Right, right. Yeah. Nobody enjoys watching these uh, tons of <laughs> no. images uh, just no. day in and day out. So no. let's try to, in Rocky 2, get fix that one first. <laughs> just get it. Well, yeah, and so you accumulate more data in the system, that is obviously going yeah. to occur. So it's going to get smarter as you go along. But in, in, ter in terms of going back and using old data, mm -hmm. so I can put my existing data, upload it to the cloud, process it with yeah. the Rocky system, get a get a better data right there. So now, now Obviously, coatings have evolved. I can start comparing coatings. I, have, I probably have a lot of data that I can upload to Rocky, a lot of photos. I can go track each one of them. I can start getting now real VN curves out of it. And now I have a better understanding. And as a manufacturer of a coating, now I, I, I can really help my customers. Say, if you have a site where there's a lot of rain, you want to use this coating, because they usually offer more than one coating. Yeah. Or if I have maybe a sandy territory, I want to go and use this coating. Yeah. But I think from the operator side also, the operators are starting to go back and do some of the testing on their own yeah. and say, okay, I have this curve. I'm not really sure. I want to verify, I, I wanna verify yeah. this, yeah. Yeah. but they have the same problem. Yeah. They need to have a system to go through that data logically so they, they can get a true set of data. Exactly. So if, uh, if you can share, the, or maybe then as an operator, you would pay for your own test. Right. And, you, you, and yeah. Maybe you should do that if you, you have a probably should. of 10,000 turbines and quite well, a huge yeah. investment in doing this, right? Sure. So making sure that the durability is anticipated so you can start planning for those LEP campaigns yeah. and not get surprised that you need to add one more in, right? Yeah. So, I do think yeah. the R&D test systems, rain erosion test rigs are as good as they're ever going to get. Like the, the technology, the one I saw at DTU is amazing. So the technology on the test side is there, it, but yeah, we just haven't figured out the human element and eliminated it. It's good that Wind Power Lab has stepped into that void yeah. because you're blade experts and you, and you yeah. understand what's happening out there and you can kind of correlate it. So you're, now that you're creating this data set, you guys will have a data set of these different codings in a sense. Yeah. And plus, 
you have a lot of people out in the field reporting back, like this blade has this issue, that blade has this issue, this coating has this issue. It should start to correlate back yes. to the to the data set, right? The VN curve should start to and, match. And feed into the innovation process of exactly. the next uh, generation of products. We're moving too slow yeah. in rain erosion. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, this project here, or the software, this is something we have commercialized now. And uh, it's available for anyone in the industry that would like to you know, use, it. It, uh, use it. It is something that started in a, in a grain funded project back home in Denmark between the Technical University of Den Denmark yeah. and uh, R&D systems. Okay. So it's actually a good use of uh, innovation uh, funding that sure. actually came all the way out to the marketplace as a tool you can buy onto uh, on subscription. It's actionable information which is needed today yeah. across the world. Yeah. So, so the, the, you know, there's two problems in the world and yeah. wind turbines, mostly. Lightning and rain erosion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And sometimes rain erosion is more than lightning, but, but those are the two. Yeah. Uh, Danny Ellis from Sky Specs told me years ago, every wind turbine has rain erosion problems. Every one of them. And I think that is going away. But until we have better data and people start using the Rocky system to, to evaluate their photos and their damage, we're just not going to solve this problem. Exactly. It's just going to continue on. Yeah. And eventually this could be what will save maybe one or two leading edge protection campaigns in an offshore scenario. Yeah, yeah. We have clients in, in Netherlands, for instance, where they save <laughs> like millions in vessel costs. Oh, easy. Because they could, you know, get rid of uh, some part of the scope. Yeah. Because they were actually able to pinpoint which, which of the turbines that were in need of a LEP coating. Yeah. That case could have been e even better if the durability on, on these products applied were actually as anticipated and yeah. planned. Yeah. So the engineering results in the lab have to match what happens in the field. Exactly. And it has to happen that way. So how do people get in contact with Windpower Lab to evaluate Rocky and take a look at it, maybe throw some images up on the, on the Rocky cloud? Yeah, so you can uh, look me up at uh, LinkedIn, of course, yep. and, and connect. I'm happy to connect with anyone that invites me. Uh, or go to windpowerlab.com and yeah. uh, you will find a contact form. We'll be in touch <laughs> and you can see our phone number. Come on and visit us in Denmark or invite us for a meeting. We're happy to. How to fast could they implement that system? They give you the phone calls, the auditors, hey, I'm ready for this. Give me the demo. How, how soon before you can hook them up and, and run well, through it? Basically, we need to create a user account. This that's is, it. That's it. Wow. Of course, they need to have, a, you know, the rain erosion data. They have the other photos. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. As, as fast as they can upload them, it's as fast as you can yes. process And them. of course, then a proper introduction, introduction to the tool. And, sure, and sure. A little bit of training. Yeah. 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 But that's but it. It's pretty user. You guys make great software, so yeah. it's yeah. pretty much user intuitive it things. Is. Yeah. So, so no complete. problem in that. And um, yeah, then uh, we could uh, discuss, you know, another topic would be that the test results we could open up and do maybe joint innovation on products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, See, and, think... and that whole deal. But it's not well, like we're sharing your results with anyone else. But no, it... but hey, if you're working with Wind Power Lab, there's a lot of smart people working there and they understand that issue. They can help help with the codings. And plus, we have seen real life and yeah, the performance. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. does it make sense? It gives good advice, yeah. which is what we need. Right? Right. We need some good advice. Anna, this is fantastic. This Thank is a really much. this is a really innovative piece of software, and it's it's going to be used, and it already is being used at GTU yeah. and R and D test systems. Yeah. Yeah. But anybody that has an R and D test system rig can use it. Anybody who has R and D test system data can use it today. Yeah, amazing. So if you have a test system with R and D today, then uh, reach out to your R and D colleagues as well. Yes. Or, uh, or contacts, and then they, we can get in touch that way as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Anders, thanks so much for being on the program. This is fantastic. Thank you very much.